Today we want to start with centroids. The centroid is an important concept to deal with because when we're dealing with distributed loads, we have to be able to find that centroid of the load intensity diagram. So this is your load intensity diagram. Recall the equivalent point load, so we want to take that distributed load and make an equivalent point load. It's going to be the area under the curve as its magnitude, and it's going to act at the centroid of this blue shape. So we need to be able to figure out what that blue shape has its, where it has its centroid. In general, how do we find the centroid of an area? Back up one step from that, what is a centroid anyway? And what I want to start with there is this notion of your pencil. You all have one, right? Get your pencil and balance it on your finger somewhere in here. How do you find out where your pencil balances? Well, you slide your finger along it, right? No, really, get your pencil out and try this, because this is important, you know, tactile learning. So if you're going to balance your pencil on your finger like this, how do you know when it's balanced? It's balanced when it doesn't fall off, right? And what do we mean by fall off? It's not like it fell through my finger. This was not a transit, translation problem. The equilibrium of my pencil failed when it tipped. And tipping, remember, is a failure of the sum of the moments equation. So we're going to look at this pencil, and we're going to say, when is the sum of the moments balanced? So the weight that's acting over here and the weight that's acting over here has to balance around my finger. So here's my weight and here's my finger. I want to balance this weight on either side. Now let's talk about for this for just a second. Here's another one. I have a binder clip on this side and just a, a wooden clothespin on that side. How am I going to find where the balance point is? On your pencil, how did you do that? You slide your finger until you get that balance point. And that's something that we do very instinctively at this point. But nobody's ever probably put it in terms of balancing the moments. So if I don't have, the pencil is a continuous weight on either side of my finger. This one is very discreet. I have that binder clip here, and it's heavier than the ruler. This is also heavier than the ruler. But the binder clip is heavier than my, my paper uh, clothespin. So my finger has to rest closer to that weight. The moments have to balance. I want to start with this picture and look at what the moment balancing actually looks like. So here's my weight one and weight two. If I want to balance the moments, what I want to do is I want to find an equivalent system. I want, and remember, equivalent system is the same, a loading system is the same when you have the sum of the forces is the same, and the sum of the moments taken at the same point is the same. So here's what system number one. I have two weights acting at distance. So if I take some random point O over here, then let me call x1 is the distance to weight 1, and x2 is the distance to weight 2. I want to make this equivalent to a system where I have only one force, the up force from my finger. So if the down force from the, the total weight of my system is the same as the up force from my finger, then I'm back in equilibrium. So I've got down and up. Where does the up go? Well, if I only have the two forces, one down and one up, as long as they act in the same place, I have a particle equilibrium, and it's pretty easy to do that. I want to know where the equivalent weight from these two things acts. So where should I put the equivalent point force? Some of the forces is the same. That means that W1 plus W2 has to be the same as F. The sum of the moments taken at some random point, O, but the same point, gives me W1x1 plus W2x2. Now those are both tending to turn O clockwise. On this side I have F acting at my magic distance. That's what I want to know. Where does this force act? That magic distance gives me a moment on this side of F times X bar. That is also going clockwise. It's important that on either side you have the same positive definition. But if you make these two the same, then what I have is that X bar is X1 W1 plus X2 W2 over F, but F is equal to W1 plus W2. So I can write that as X bar is the sum of W1 X1 plus W2 X2, or for as many as I want. I mean, you, this, this is completely generalizable to as many weights as you'd like. The sum of the weights times their distances 
divided by the sum of the weights has to be my x. And it's all the same thing as balancing your moments. Where does your finger need to go? Where does the equivalent point force down have to act so that my normal force for my finger is acting in the same spot? That's what a centroid is. It's balancing the tendencies on the moments on either side. So this is the discrete one. If this is my discrete one, what would a continuous version look like? So if I go between my binder clip and clothespin back to my pencil, if I have a continuous one, what I want to take is small, tiny, tiny bits of weight all the way along and add them up. And if you take small, tiny bits of something and add them up, yeah, oh yeah, that's an integral. So my summation goes back to being an integral. This is called the center of gravity. If, on the other hand, the distance between one end of my object and the other end of my object is not significantly big enough to change my gravity, then I could say that my every little bit of weight is a mass times gravity. That gives me the, my center of mass. So you that, see how the, the gravities would cancel out from both of these? You could pull them out of the integrals and they'd cancel and you get the center of mass. If I have a constant density, so instead of having these two different objects, I have simply a continuous sparkly ruler. The, the density of this ruler is the same all the way along. So my mass is a density times volume, but the densities will cancel out. That gives me a centroid of my volume. If instead of having a three-dimensional object, we want to consider this as a flat two-dimensional object, so that the thickness into the page is also a constant, I can factor that out, I get an area. This, if somebody no, just says, I want a centroid, they're probably talking about a centroid of the area. Though, you can see they're all essentially the same. The formulas are all essentially the same. Even to the point of doing a centroid of the line. So if you have something that's a uniform thickness all the way through, you can find the centroid of your line by dividing by that thickness, and you get this little thing. This is the centroid of the line. Um, one note I want to say here is that these are all written in terms of x-bar, but you can go back to balancing your pencil in a different coordinate system, and you can see that this would be the same for y-bar or z-bar. All of these are, work the same way. Now, there are two more videos to come. One of them is to actually talk about how do I find these DV, DWs, or more likely, how do I find these DAs? This is what we're generally going to talk about. Because if you go back, remember what we're talking about here is these distributed loads, where I want to find out what the centroid of the distributed load is. So this is, this is sort of where I'm going to start. How do I calculate this integral? And then part two, how do I use this formula, the discrete formula, to actually find centroids for all kinds of composite bodies, anything that's built up of shapes.